sometimes I have to go above and beyond with uh, with who I am as a person and show that I, I am this nice guy. And when people take that, because the moment that people see, I call it the human element. I mean, when people see me uh, get frustrated or angry about something, it startles them because they don't know how to handle that. And I get upset just like anybody else does. But because of my size, me also being African American, it sometimes scares people. So I do my best to uh, be very conscious of every situation I'm involved in and making sure, especially in those type of situations, that I don't alarm uh, that officer in any form of that way. Can we hear people's experiences, people of all color and gender? This resonates with you, right? No, yeah, absolutely. I'll throw yeah. something out. Uh, it was mentioned earlier about women holding their purses closer, close to them in an elevator when a black man enters the elevator. It's, it's interesting, I had that discussion with my sister probably a couple weeks ago. She's married to a very, very large black man. Um, and he, he mentioned something about a woman did step out of the elevator. And she said, no, she didn't step out of the elevator because you were black. She stepped out of the elevator because you were a man and you were a large man. And actually women are taught for their own personal safety don't get into an elevator alone with a man. It doesn't matter what color he is. Kind of step out of that situation. So it it was interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I didn't get in trouble with the law when I was growing up. And I, well, I got pulled over a couple of times, but um, I thank God nothing crazy. But there was one incident that I had. Uh, Punch in there. No, I, I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to. Um, my brother was being jumped by two um, guys because he was arguing with his girlfriend. And then I saw police cars shooting, like not shooting, shooting, but zooming past. So I'm like, my brother, he's not with me. Let me double back. So I pull up to the gas station and he's arguing. The two guys are just got done trying to fight him. And so I get out the car and a police officer there. Now, I, I, I know I have a big mouth, I know that. And I didn't really care for authority. But I didn't like the fact that the police officers were manhandling with my brother and not the two guys that were jumping on my brother. And so I started talking, but I, I'm, I'm very wise. I'm not going to provoke them in any way. But I started asking them questions on why are you doing A, B, C, and D. And not only am I talking, he's starting to get closer to me. And he started saying that, um, stop resisting arrest. And I said, I'm not resisting. I have my hands up. And I'm yelling because it's just my brother and I and those two guys. And so I'm talking louder so that people who are on the inside can come out and start watching. And so when I started to see that there were witnesses, I started talking to them like, listen, what you're doing is wrong and this, that, and another. And, and then I also like to try to make, at that time, people feel bad. So I said, you know, I'm done arguing. We're going to move past this. And I'm extending my hand to shake his hand. And he's still yelling at me. And I keep it out there. And then he finally grabs my hand and he's squeezing it hard. And he's shaking it and he's just squeezing it. He's yelling. And then I didn't budge, I didn't flinch. And I'm just smiling. And I'm just, you know what? It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And then he saw that I was sincere. And he changed his whole philosophy. He went from being totally irate to, I'm just like you. My, my, my grandparents are Irish. And, and when they came over to America, we had the same thing. So I know what you're going through. I'm like, dude, you don't know what I'm going through. You have no clue. But say what you have to say in the comedy. And so I experienced that type. Um, that was one thing. But I know they were profiling, but I, I don't pay attention to a lot of that stuff. Thank you. I was going to say, uh, I mean, to my credit, every experience that I have with officers is not bad. I don't think. All police officers are all uh, people that are like that or in certain positions. I don't always think they're out to get uh, or anything like that. So I've, I've had great experiences with officers. Uh, but sometimes some of the the, the, the close back, it, it's happened maybe a couple of times, you know, because of uh, profiling or looking for someone else who drives the same exact kind of car, that type of thing. Um, but one time, you know, uh, me and my friend, we got pulled over. Uh, you know, they're flashing the lights, they got a marker, don't move it. You know, I'm terrified, you know, because, you know, I got my hands on the dash like this.
because I don't want to make any movement or anything that makes them think that I have anything. Because that's it's just terrifying because you don't want it your life end because that person's wrong, you can't disagree. Okay, officer, you know, whenever uh, a situation like that, it's like you just got, okay, hey, you know, I don't want problems, so I'm just trying to figure out what's happening. You know, and uh, it's just unfortunate that that happens sometimes. If it was a female cop to a male, yeah. Uh, so what are the or, statistics for you? Who gave you more tickets, male or female? Well, it's been all male cops. Oh, okay. You know, so would a woman who got pulled over for the same thing be more likely to be let off by a male cop? I mean, it's crossed my mind. Good point. Yeah. You know, it, it do men get more tickets because more cops are men, and they're more likely to be. Uh, more likely to nail you if you're a man. That's one good point, but there's a caveat. There are more male uh, policemen in the streets than female, so it's hard to really compare, but it's a good point. Yeah. Right. Yeah, please. Um, well, I have been pulled over a couple of times and I had a couple of major tickets, and uh, for some reason or another, I, said I tend to get more nervous or something. I don't know if um, African Americans or something in a similar situation I was, I was in that was talking really fast and probably sounded pretty incoherent would have just been uh, okay and go about their business or if they would have been questioned a lot more can I see into your car I've never yeah, I've, they've never asked to see anything more than just the license and the registration and look at my numbers and come back to me and either let me go or um, or uh, give me the ticket. But I, I, I don't <laughs> doubt that um, minorities in the same situation that would have been, if they had any sort of uh, speech inflection that sounded nervous, that would have been a heck of a lot more than what happened. Thank you. Uh, I was going to say, I mean, you know, definitely sometimes, you know, whether it's a traffic stop or you being stopped by accident, you know, hey, what are you doing in this neighborhood, you know? Yeah. Um, it's. Um, it's, it's interesting because I, I feel like the, the things that do help, and and I, and I think 
it's only because of this that sometimes they're not as, uh, you know, uh, as aggressive, things like that. When, if I was to get pulled over or talk to an officer, I mentioned school. I mentioned that I'm in school. You know, I mentioned that, you know, hey, I, uh, you know, I do this and this. And I'm involved with this. I'm do this for the university. And then they tend to, mm -hmm. to actually, to, to kind of digress themselves a little bit, kind of calm down, and their approach is uh, almost completely different. So that happens a, a, a lot um, because it, it, it saves you more than anything. I remember one time I, I got pulled over. I was doing like five miles of bus being at the airport over. Um, and I told the officer, I said, honestly, um, it's, I know it's late. Um, I guess I was going five miles over, but I got this uh, project due in a couple of days. I'm just trying to hurry up and get here. I don't have a Wi-Fi in my house. I'm trying to get a place where I can work and do this work. You know, so it's uh, it's interesting because uh, when they when you talk to them like that, then they, they seem a little more receptive. Then they say, oh, you know what, I'll give you a warning. You know, so. Oh, we're not talking to you. There might be some stereotypes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Let me ask everyone: Who among you were told to behave in a certain way, like put your hands up or on the steering wheel when the cops come? Okay, one, two, three. Okay. I've learned that on my own. You've learned that on your own before. Okay. Put my hands just like this, and then uh, I, I keep my uh, my driver's license. And uh, my insurance card, my book apartment, because I have a state ID, okay. so um, so I don't ever forget it. Okay. Um, so whenever you know they, they ask me to see it, I'm like, hey, I keep in my glove apartment. All right, can I go in my glove apartment and pull it out? You know, so. In a non-scientific survey, Latino, African American, Asian, and one European American were told or learned to put your head in a certain way where the cops come. Could you? But in the something. one case where that happened to me, yeah. I got pulled over for speeding in Minnesota and presented my driver's license. My last name, which is not common, happened to be the same as somebody who was a, an escaped felon. Oh, no. And so they <laughs> did, and, and, they, and the person who was riding in the car with me, who they thought might be that person who could yeah. be my relative, they had us both get out, or, but there was a very, and then they explained it afterwards when they knew that we had nothing to do with that. Okay. So when it did, so you asked that question, I said yes, that happened to me, but there was a very specific very reason specific. for it. Okay. So that. Okay, right. But for us in this non-scientific, it seems like the minorities were told, be careful when you deal with cops, put your hand a certain way they might think. Yeah. They're very unscientific, honestly. and you have a special case. They like right? to in school. Yeah. In school, not just their parents. Like in school, school, too. Okay. Tell us that, like, we would have okay, yeah. I learned that. I was told, you know. You're of color. You better be careful. Put your hands there. You don't want them to suspect anything will, you know, happen with you. I was going to say one last thing. Um, I had a situation. I forgot all about this. Uh, I was coming back from Chicago. It was like three o'clock in the morning, me and uh, three of my other friends. So we was driving back to the cow. We got pulled over. We didn't know why. We he wasn't for speeding or anything like that. And so he, he pulls us over and he says, uh, we're doing a random drug search. He said, we look for uh, opium, heroin, cocaine, uh, all that stuff. And he was like, you guys have it, send it out now. And so, you know, when we need repercussions, when we can start searching your stuff, and if we find something, you get arrested. So I'm like, drugs? You know, I'm in the car, I'm like, oh my God, like, why are they even asking us? This is so random. You know, and essentially all he did was check out stuff, and you know, we talked about how he was going, he was coming back to school, we went to some.